you would feel hot. Um, maybe anxious. Body metabolic processes can also be increased. So diarrhea. All right, so just think of everything um, being sped up. With hypothyroidism, the opposite. Okay? So you would have a low metabolic activity. So it's easy to gain weight. Reflexes are slow. Um, the skin and hair are dull. All right. Not shiny. Gland activity is decreased. Instead of um, diarrhea, you're more likely to have constipation. Now, unfortunately, with hyperthyroidism, you're not smarter. But with hypothyroidism, you can be duller. Okay? It takes you longer to think, to solve problems. If you're going to school, your grades are going to decrease. All right? So decrease in mental activity. If you have hypothyroidism as an adult, this can, um, you can recover from this by taking thyroid medications, Synthroid, but it can take a while. It's not going to be like in two weeks, boom, you're back to normal. Right? I've had students with this, and they told me it's been two or three months that they've been on medication, and they still don't feel quite right. School can still be difficult. If this occurs in an infant, permanent mental, mental retardation and effect can occur. And it's called cretinism. Because so much of brain development and neural development still has to occur after an infant is born. They're not completely mature mentally in their neural formation and myelination. <clears throat> so that, that can, this would be within, if this occurs in infancy. The child on the left has a goiter, and we talked about this yesterday. So this is, would this person have, this individual have elevated um, TSH, TRH, or low TRH and TSH? Right. <laughs> All right, so are they producing a lot of thyroglobulin? They yes. are just inactive. But it's inactive without the iodine attached to it. Mm -hmm. And so the hypothalamus perceives that as low levels of thyroid and increases TRH. So the anterior pituitary increases TSH, and that's what causes the goiter. Okay, that's what causes the hyperplasia, either increase in the size of the cells or an increase in the number of the cells. Graves' disease, one of the common signs is exophthalmic, uh, the protrusion of the eyeballs. This is not because the eyeballs get bigger, but because there's edema occurring in the connective tissue behind the eyeballs um, as a form of hyperthyroidism. So it, this can be caused by a variety of issues, um, anterior or pituitary or hypothalamic. Um, treatment can sometimes result in hypothyroidism. So often the treatment, there's two different forms. You can do surgery, or you can give the person radioactive iodine, and the radioactivity becomes localized in the thyroid gland and kills the cells locally. So it's not a high dose. It's, in fact, it's radioactive iodine. The radioactive iodine is a low dose radioactive molecule. It's often used in research the tag molecules that you want to study to see when they're 
how fast they're internalized into the cell. And so you provide them a radioactive iodide bound to some antibody or some receptor, and then you can do counts and see if it's in the wash that you wash the cells with or if it's in the cells after you wash them. So, but in high concentrations where the iodide is concentrated more by the thyroid gland than in the other organ, then it can result in uh, killing off the cells. But if too much are killed off, then the individual has to go on to thyroid hormones, okay, which are uh, more, there's quite a few different brands of synthetically produced thyroid, but it's difficult to actually regulate. Um, and I've heard that if you have hypothyroidism and you go on thyroid hormones, uh, like Synthroid, then you are, have to be on it for the rest of your life. And I've lost, is that true? Okay, my, my sister was, they've changed the levels. There's a lot of stuff out there about hypothyroidism and natural cures, and they've changed the levels of what is considered to be low. They've actually <coughs> raised them. So if you had a level of, I don't know how, I don't remember what the units are, but used to be low levels were 3.2, 3.5, and now they're raised to 3.5 or 4. So some individuals that may have been told five years ago that their thyroid levels were normal are now considered to be low. And so there's some change in the medical treatment of that. Yes, Emma. So then what, because on, on page 41 it says that both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism have a, have a goiter. So typically, yeah. Typically hypothyroidism, goiters are associated with hypothyroidism. So then what way? Um, but <coughs> other causes can cause goiters and hyperthyroidism. Um, um, if it's an actual tumor. So if it's an actual increase in the number of the cells and they're actually then producing iodinated uh, tyrosine, then it would be hyperthyroid. So a goiter is in a large <coughs> thyroid gland. Yeah. And most commonly it's caused by hyperplasia due to hypothyroidism. But if it's cancer, then it's too many cells, which is hyperthyroidism. Is there, they're producing active hormones. Is there any way to reverse the bulging eyeballs? Syndrome. Yeah, by lowering the thyroid. So they just, they, the edema would go down and okay. Some people just naturally have big eyes. Like every time you see the big eyes, it doesn't mean that they've yeah. got a thyroid problem. Okay, now before we leave the thyroid gland, I don't have parathyroid on here, but we're going to talk about it. Um, before we leave thyroid, I'm going to go back to this image here. Um, I think the video that I put a link to said that there are two hormones made by the thyroid gland. And then they made a mistake. They're correct. There are two hormones made by the thyroid gland. But they identified the two hormones as T3 and T4, which are really the same hormone. Okay? Anybody know what the additional hormone is that's made by the thyroid gland? Parathyroid? Nope. That's a different gland. It actually has the opposite effect of parathyroid hormone. Oh, calcitonin? Calcitonin. Mm -hmm. So the thyroid gland makes thyroid hormone. We'll just say that and not it differentiate between T3 and T4. <coughs> and then cells that are in between. So see the C cells here? Mm -hmm. So those are large light standing cells in between the follicles. Next week we'll talk about the interstitial cells in the testes that are in between the seminiferous tubes. Those are the cells that make testosterone, so in a similar location. But these are large and pale, known as C cells, make calcitonin. So these are made by follicular cells. <coughs> right? And calcitonin are made by C cells. And they have the opposite effect of parathyroid hormone. So are these going to increase or decrease calcitonin levels? Uh, decrease. De decrease. So calcitonin functions to decrease blood concentrations of calcium. And it does so um, by increasing. Uh, well, its primary form 
is decreasing osteoplast activity. That's the primary mechanism. Because osteoclast activity, remember, uses lysosomal enzymes to break down collagen, and that releases the hydroxyapatite, the calcium that attached to the collagen. It also affects um, intestinal absorption. And when we get to the urinary system, the kidneys uh, make a couple of hormones, and one of them is calcitriol, which also affects um, absorption. But the primary hormone that regulates calcium levels is parathyroid hormone or parathormone, either term is fine. And that is found posterior, and we talked about that yesterday. So those are uh, found on the posterior aspect, so the lateral portion of the thyroid and the posterior aspect of the lateral portion of the thyroid gland. Again, these are not part of the thyroid, they're outside the thyroid. <clears throat> it makes it easy to identify these cells, however, when you see thyroid follicles. So these cells are very numerous. They don't have, um, they might find some bright pink and some light pink, but you're not going to find purple and pink and dark purple, various colors like we do in the anterior pituitary. And these cells secrete the hormone, parathyroid hormone or parathormone. This is essential for life, okay? It's going to increase calcium concentrations in the blood. Again, by increasing osteoclast activity or increasing intestinal absorption. And it is essential for life. There is some artificial parathyroid hormone being produced, okay? Um, it's not completely, um, it's not that it's not cleared for medical use, but it's not found to, that people don't need their parathyroid glands at all. So if some, I had a friend, a colleague at Sac State, who went in for his annual physical, and the blood test came back with abnormally high calcium levels. And they asked him if he was getting muscle cramps or uh, joint pain, and he said no. And they said, well, you will soon. And one of his parathyroid glands was cancerous. And so he had <coughs> surgery to remove it. Now, if all four had been cancerous, they would have had to have left one or part of one behind. Because calcium ions are very important for two major functions. Nerve and muscle. And, muscle. Okay. and our heart is a muscle. It needs calcium. Uh, so regardless of the skeletal muscle, but the nerve and the heart are requiring calcium ions, um, you need at least part of a parathyroid gland present. And so they would have left just part of one behind and then just kept doing checks and whether they had to go back in and remove components. It's not highly metastatic, but it is a... Um, cancer, it's not just a benign growth that's going to stay in place. So you would have had to have had a close check on it. But it was just found in one, and so just that one tissue was removed. So this is epithelial tissue. It, epithelial tissue, because they're more highly mitotic than many other types of tissues, um, are often more commonly, those than blood cells, are one of our more common types of cancers because they have a natural I have a tendency to undergo mitosis and replace themselves. Alrighty. We are done. You want to be done? Yeah. Just a few. I've got another 20 minutes. I can talk.